78% of people who Google something near them results in a purchase. I don't know about you, but I want a piece of that pie. And that's why we have Amy here today. She's going to tell us a little bit more about herself, why this topic matters to her, and why it should matter to you. Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, Shauna. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a great chat for everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's true. And I know lots of people make up statistics, but this one in particular was really staggering when I saw it earlier this year or last year. 78% um, of people who are Googling things like, pizza joint near me, plumber near me, attorney near me. 78% of those people are making a purchase. They are definitely spending their money when they go and search some, for something intentional that they're looking to buy or some service that they're looking to engage. So um, I, I hear so often so many business owners talking about how they get all of their business by word of mouth and, and referrals and all this. But, but if you can have a piece of that online pie of people searching for you, why wouldn't you want that? And I think there's a major um, lack of knowledge and education about websites and search engine optimization, which is that organic ranking, the way you get to the top of Google. Um, and so I'm just on a mission to educate people about that. I love it. I love it so much because truly I've kind of been that person who's leaning more towards this mentality that you talk about. I was very much a glo global business. And in fact, I still am, of course. However, I was missing out on that 78%. 100% hundred yeah. of the time because yeah. I wasn't actually doing the do for my local uh, fellow business owners and, and people in my community who needed my services and who would otherwise be searching marketer near me. But I wasn't yeah. optimized in that space. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the first step in doing so? I know that's a loaded question. That's a totally loaded question, right? Um, but, you know, the first step is really having an online presence having a website at all. Um, many people, you know, I spoke to um, a guy that's had a business here in my area for about 25 years, started by his grandfather. They really have never had an online presence. They've only ever been in the yellow pages um, and, you know, just, you know, getting referrals from people at church and other businesses. And he's like, well, I'm the new generation stepping into this. We've got a 25 year old business with zero online presence. So, you know, when would have been the best time for them to get that? Well, back in the, you know, 90s or early 2000s when everyone else was getting a website. But but the best time to plant a tree, right, is 20 years ago. But the next best time is to do it now. So getting a great website um, up and running for your business is, is really key. And that's where I think another huge piece of confusion comes in for many business owners, especially those starting out. Um, there are a lot of options out there for a website, right? In fact, they just made an announcement that the, the free Google business sites are going away, the ones that are attached to that Google business profile. You probably mm -hmm. saw that in the Google news. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of options out there and knowing what really is the best option for your business at that state, at the stage that you're in um, is really key as well. Absolutely. And I know that some of the things that deter people from even broaching this conversation with someone like you or I is, is this prospect of SEO search engine optimization. It can feel really scary. Like, how am I going to get on the first page of Google? Oh my goodness. Um, if yeah. that's your goal, remembering mm -hmm. that everybody's marketing goals are different in how they right. approach it. But like, what do you say to those people who are nervous about all of the potential tech stacking that happens behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, I really find that most business owners don't know that most of, most of them don't even know the term SEO. Um, they, they might understand like a local SEO. They've heard local SEO with their Google business profile. But really, um, I don't get a lot of hesitation about that um, because there's just I do a great I spend a great deal of time educating people. Um, so really, the first barrier to overcome for a business owner is for, to get them to understand that having a website and having a website that ranks or shows up when someone searches is two completely different things. So just having a website, I like to explain it like this. If you were to build a house in the middle of a field, in the middle of nowhere, the only person that would ever find that house is the person that you hand your address to and say, hey, here's my new address at 123 Main Street. Come and see me, right? Um, no one else is going to organically find their way to your home unless you put up some billboards and some roads and some directions to your house. So right. SEO is the billboards and roads and directions to your house. Um, 
in fact, Google doesn't even know that there are billions and billions of websites on the internet and, and millions go up every single day. Google doesn't even know that those are there unless and until it takes the time to crawl it, see that it's set up right, see that it has valuable content in it. And then Google will do what we call index that site. So there's a really complicated process to getting a website to show up. But the bottom line is, um, People on the internet are not looking for anything different than your in-person customers are looking for. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So what is an in-person customer looking for? If they walk into a business or they call a business even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah they give give, give the them what they want first. Give right? them what I'm looking for. Yes. So in order to understand how websites show up when someone searches something like pizza near me or plumber near me, you have to understand what Google's goal is. Google's goal is to take the question or the query or the search that its user it's, is searching and deliver that person the very best answer it possibly can because Google's customer is their searcher. Google wants to please that customer. And so Google is going to go out, if I Google plumber near me, Google's going to go out on the internet and scan the billions of websites that it has access to and say, okay, who is the closest to where Amy is right now? Physically, right. where is she at? Um, and then what website is fast? Is it mobile friendly? Because I might be on my cell phone, I might be on a tablet, or I might be on a desktop. So Google wants to make sure that it's going to be friendly and easy for me to understand no matter what device I'm on. It also wants to make sure that the answer it serves up is is a good answer, right? So if I go and the first result is a website that that I'm, that that doesn't answer my questions and it's like, okay, and then I keep scrolling down and scrolling down and I have to go to page two to finally get the answer that suits my needs. Google's like, oh man, we missed the mark with her. We didn't mm. serve her what she needed. So they're gonna go back to the drawing board and say, okay, whoever we have in position one wasn't the right answer. We need to reevaluate these answers. And the answer Google's looking for is, again, the closest. Um, it's fast. It's friendly. It's structured well so that Google can understand what the website's all about. And then um, is it answering the questions that, that I'm asking? Well, right now I'm only asking plumber near me. But if you've ever noticed on a Google search, people also ask. Have you ever noticed that little section? Pete, Google already knows what else I'm going to ask. It knows I'm going to ask, how much is it to, to snake a drain? What do I do when my kid shoves a Barbie head down the toilet? What do I, who's responsible for my sewer under my house, me or the city? These kinds of questions, if your website is not the answer to all of the questions that I might have as a top of funnel consumer, then Google doesn't want to serve it up because it's not doing its job. Google's job is to get Amy to come back to Google again and again and again for all. It wants to be the resource of my information, whether I'm looking for a pizza or a plumber. Google's goal is to keep me on their platform and keep coming back to their platform so that it can put ads in front of my eyes. Right. If you're right. not if you're not paying, then you are You know, if you're not paying for if you're not um, being paid for it, then you are the product. Right. So we are Google's product. It wants to keep us on its platform. No different than any other social media platform these days, too. Absolutely. And I think that's a really important um, concept for people to understand is that you are you are indeed that that product, regardless of whether you're on social media, on a search engine, no matter what. Now, you mentioned social media. So what my brain goes to is, OK, so how are we putting up these these signposts? How are we putting up these neon signs that direct people? And a lot of times um, we're exploring the world of social media. How are you showing up in a way that Google can find you across the board? But there's also the other side of things, and that is like what you're actually including on your website itself. Can we take a moment to dive into these two kind of ideas of marketing yourself and your website in order to get eyes on what you're doing? Yeah, so um, the first question is what needs to be on the website? Sure. Yeah, let's start there okay. and then move okay. into the, the social aspect of things and how people use content to market their their business and their website off of their uh, domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it takes it takes a multi pronged approach to to digital marketing. Right. We have all these different avenues that we can get. So the goal of the website should be, again, to get top of funnel. Uh, top of funnel questions answered. We want other questions answered, right? We So Google can really only understand that one page on a website is really about one thing. 
It can't really understand that my website is about logos and branding and SEO and Google ads and Facebook ads. So there needs to be a separate page for each one of those things on your website. So again, if you're a plumber, there needs to be a separate page for toilets and water leaks and garbage disposals and sewer lines. So we can't, Google can't really understand that each one of those things is um, if, if they're all on the same page, Google can't understand that. So we want to make sure that we have a page, a separate page um, that's talking about each one of the services that we offer. If we serve in multiple locations, Google can all, uh, cannot understand that I do services in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa. It can't understand two separate cities. So there needs to be a location page for each location that I serve. And even tunneling further down, there should also be a location page. If I want to rank in Tulsa for logos, there needs to be a logos in Oklahoma City page and a logos in Tulsa page, right? right. Because again, Google can't understand that. So that's usually our first and if we're starting from scratch with a business, we we do the traditional, you know, we got the home page, the about us page, all the service pages, lots of location pages. And then eventually, once we covered all of those things, we typically roll into what a blog format, which is the blog, the whole point of a blog is answering those very, very top of funnel questions that people yes. are asking when they're just thinking about doing business with you. So for example, uh, my husband, Joseph, and I just sold a, a painting company earlier this last year, or past year. Um, and one of the top ranking pages on that site, outside the homepage, was a blog article that answered the question, how much does a painter make per hour? Hmm. Okay, well, that's not what I would Google if I'm looking for someone to paint my home. However, we have to think about our consumers. And so we have to think about the lady sitting in her living room, you know, scrolling on her TikTok, looking up, going, geez, that paint looks like crap. <laughs> oh, we should really paint. What are the most popular paint colors? Like, how much does it, is there even a painter in this area? Um, what would it cost to, to buy the paint myself? I wonder if I could just hire someone hourly. What would that look like? OK, so mm -hmm. as all these questions are swimming around in her head about, man, my paint job looks like crap. I want to get my house painted. She's not going and looking for um, house painter near me. She could go and Google house painter near me. A top thing could fill could pop up and she could fill out a form or make a phone call and hire a painter that day. However, that's rarely the path that a person takes when they're thinking about a paint job or thinking about any other service. Right. We, we want to find out some information first. Yeah, so that's a different we stage have to be all together. Different stage in the sales pipeline, right? So yeah. when your website has a blog or has individual pages that are answering those questions that are ranking for that question that someone's asking and you get an opportunity to bring them to your website and your website is fast and it's mobile friendly and it answers all their questions and you find out how much does the painter make per hour? Well, great. They make 35 bucks an hour in Oklahoma City. I'm not going to pay somebody, you know, that when I'm not really sure. And then there's all this other information about why you would want to hire a professional painter with a license or with, you know, with the insurance and with all of these things. Um, and so then you get an opportunity to do business with them. Right. Right. And it, it gives you kind of, it empowers you. This is the thing that I like to look at when I'm uh, encouraging others to write blogs for their website is the, the idea that when you structure it in the way that you just described, you're also empowering your potential purchaser. Um, yes. Because now they're able to make an informed decision. Now right. they feel like they have a lot more control. Now you're going right. to, to include some copywritten elements that really drive them towards action. Um, mm -hmm. But you're making sure that you're putting the ball in their court. And that's a really yeah. important part of it. Another aspect yeah. of this, just on a very superficial level, I suppose, is the, the idea that writing a blog and posting frequently to your website um, kind of says hello to search engine saying, hey, I'm still relevant. I'm mm -hmm. still here. Just simply the simple mm -hmm. act of doing so. Yeah. Yeah. So just the fact that you're continuing to put out content that, you know, that's the, the last several updates have had something to do with useful content. We keep seeing that useful content. Google doesn't just want an entire blog article about Painter and Norman, Painter and Norman, Painter and Norman, Painter and Norman. Well, yeah, you're going to eventually rank for Painter and Norman, but is that even valuable anymore? It used to be enough to list all the zip codes you served and all the keywords you have on a page and it would rank. But now Google's going, all right, today, just like you just said, Shauna, Today is the day of the educated consumer. People are just absolutely massively consuming information before they make a decision. And it's our job to position ourselves as the correct choice for their decision that they're trying to make.
Yeah. And there are so many, in fact, elements. so many, so many business owners are, are wanting that person that does do the Google search lands right on the website and fills out that form. But in our world, that's what we call That's like asking someone to marry you on the first date. Like yeah. they're just trying to date you, man. They just want a cup of coffee and you're like, marry me, marry me, do business with me. Well, one of the things we do for, for our clients, um, that are willing to take this journey with us to continue marketing and not losing those potential leads is give that person who's just curious something. Give them a guide. You've, every one of us have given our email address in exchange for a PDF download, a guide, a checklist, a, a something, right? Like how to snake, if you're a plumber, put it out there. Tell your customer how to snake their, snake their own drain. You don't want to go to their home and snake their toilet for a micro machine for $89 anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you do because that's a lead into business, but also you could save a little bit of time by teaching them how to snake their own drain, putting them in your email sequence, reaching out to them on a weekly or biweekly or monthly basis with information that helps them around their home in other areas as it relates to plumbing. And then who do you think they're going to call when the pipes really do break, when you have an opportunity to replace a hot water tank or something in their lives, because you've been that helpful person all along. And you just answered a question they had about snaking their drain, right? I love that so much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was actually the just way. having this conversation with someone about how, like, okay, you can you can do tactics out the wazoo, but if the person doesn't know you, like you, and trust you, and I know that's, that's right, it's become very buzzwordy and cliche, the no like trust sure. factor, but it's true. It's absolutely it's true. true. People buy from people. I mean, right. I know that maybe. You know, when I'm having a conversation with someone, um, even if it's in a strategy capacity, um, I know that they're going to be asking me some interesting questions and I'm going to answer them in a way. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> just fixing some tech. Don't worry about tech, it. Tech, tech. Oh, we're good. That's right. We're good. Um, I'm going to answer them in a way that I know will allow them to take a peek behind the curtain to yeah. take a look at who am I really mm -hmm. over and above being an organic growth marketer. What do I stand for and how do I want to approach all the things that I do? Oftentimes okay. that looks like talking about sustainability, being eco-friendly, being creative, being imaginative, and maybe a little bit spontaneous at times. You know, that's yeah. that gives them some insight into, oh, okay, so that's how you think. Yeah, mm. I want to be in that world. Or mm, yeah. maybe not my cup of tea. But both yeah. are excruciatingly valid and you need your website and everything that you're putting out into the world to market your website to do the same thing. That's right. And you that that brings up the perfect next piece of this conversation, which was the social media aspect, correct? Mm -hmm. Like, so the majority of my business comes to me through my social media channels. Am I a viral influencer? No, I have a few thousand followers across several platforms. But what I do have is an engaged audience that comments back, right that knows who I am, that loves to watch me bake sourdough, that half of them tuned in to watch me and my husband be baptized on live TV at our church the other day. Um, we're baking bread. They see our children. They see that we're marketers. They see that we have an online magazine. They see our lives. And just like you said, people do business with people. Just like we had a tech issue a while ago. We are people, guys. We have laptops and computers and Wi-Fi and like cats walking across things. I mean, who knows? We're people. But people need to see that realness. Like all of my social media handles by default, because Amy single Singleton was taken, I turned into the real Amy Singleton. And it was kind of funny at that time because I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll never be famous or have a real following, but I'm just going to use the real Amy Singleton. And ironically, it, it became such something that I'm really known for because I just keep it real. I really do. I'm like, you know, if, if I were wearing sweats instead of these gold pants, I would stand up and show you I'm wearing sweats today. Like, you know, I'm just a person. I do business with people. And that's what brings me so much joy is watching these people grow their businesses and truly step out of the doing and into the managing and into the birthday parties and the backyard barbecues and the OU football games and the things that they want yes. to do. Like we get to grow that. It's exciting. I mean, I mean, come on, like it's totally how is. much more joy can you get from, from watching someone take their dream and not only fulfill that for themselves, but grow their teams, impact their people that, that they're employing. To me, that's the definition of an entrepreneur is to grow something and be bold Old enough to put it out there to grow it big enough um, that you can support other families and then serve the clients you serve and have a bigger and bigger and bigger impact. That's how you do it. And, and a lot of people are hesitant to put themselves out there and think, ah, it's all fake and it's all online. 
well, I feel like we're a little bit more connected than we've really ever been. And yes, there's a lot of fake out there online, but there's also a lot of really genuinely wonderful people that want to connect. And I have friends all over the globe because of of these relationships that we that we've made and that all started online. And I see them in person now. Absolutely. It's amazing. And I think of when when people you get this all the time. Oh, it's so fake. And I always like to my response truly, really, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. You set the precedent for your world digitally and in and in real life, right? Yeah, how you it. show up, you set the precedent. And, and I think that's a really important um, aspect to how you're marketing yourself on social media. Now, um, I'm curious then, as people are showing up on social media, and we're encouraging you all to show up as your authentic self, of course, because stepping into your authentic power um, is both intrinsically and extrinsically immensely valuable. Over and above that, though. How are we using that to boost our website performance? Yeah. So it, if you are, if we're talking about personal channels here, like my personal Facebook, um, you know, there are a lot of things you can do to set yourself up as an expert in your industry, right? So like in your bio, instead of just saying you like, you know, mom of three digital marketer, whatever, put your website there, put a call to action there. Like, building people's businesses one website at a time and whatever it is that you're doing, um, put that there so people know who you know who you are and what you're doing. Um, another thing you can do is share really valuable resources. So like those lead generators we were talking right. about, um, share resources and be completely transparent and open with those resources. Give away the farm. We have built our business by giving away so much information, training, teaching people to do what we do themselves to even maybe work with someone that, that they're not quite ready, can't afford us. Like let us connect you with someone that can move you forward. Yes. Um, all just by giving massive amounts of value. And, you know, of course, if you have a blog and you want to highlight something you've written about, absolutely link that into your normal content. It doesn't have to be 90% business content. But as you were saying earlier, when we're, when we're talking about working from our personal channels, I know at least for me in business and so many people I've talked to, when you're when you're new, you want to work with anybody and everybody, anybody that will pay you money, anybody that will do anything. Like we any will you paying? Are you paying? I'm doing. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. Like we want, we're new, right? We gotta learn. We're we're just honing our craft. But um I wish that I'd instead really identified my ideal clients and the people I enjoy working with the most a little earlier on, which now we do have that um, luxury of working with the people that we synergize with um, the best. But as you put out that personal content, um, like you, you said, you know, you're, you're into the eco-friendly. Well, like you're probably not going to resonate with someone, um, you know, like who, whatever, who like runs a trash heap. I don't know, like probably not going to be like a great person. Um, you're not going to have similar values. You're not going to care about the same things. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you start to reveal yourself online to your potential audience, um, it really draws in those people who are connected with you that do care about locally sourced sourdough bread, baking at home, you know, it's sustainability. You want to work with those people, right? Like I don't want to work with racists and, and assholes and I don't want to work with people that I don't yeah. get along with anyway. So if my content repels them, yes, that's great. I want it to repel them so that it can draw forward the people that I do want to work with. Absolutely. I love that. And actually, that's a really great point um, about the whole eco-friendly thing, because I very early in my career, I would say, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I expressed to someone that, you know what, I don't work with product based companies unless they're e sustainable, unless they're eco friendly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I had a somebody who was in the business for many, many, many more years than I was, was like, that's ridiculous. You're closing off a market. You're da -da. And I said, you know what, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Um, we parted ways because we couldn't see eye to eye on that, but I was like, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I wish you the most success ever. And yeah. I will continue to work with sustainable, eco-friendly companies or services because service-based yeah. usually can come with a, a lower footprint. Um, yeah. So I just, I do that. And there's a marketer for that person, right? That they're going to get that's along cute. a lot better. That's going to care. I find that when I really care about the mission behind my clients, and I, I understand not everybody can be this picky, but mm -hmm. you know, like when I really um, get to get behind the mission of my clients, those are the people that I have the most success with. Absolutely. Yes. We have the most success and their businesses see the most success because that's we believe cute. in what they're doing. Like you're going to work harder for someone like, 
you would love working with our hydroponics client. Like he is growing yes. right here. Eco-friendly. Everything is like, and I am, I am his, what, what, what it really is, I think. And you know, it's kind of funny how it comes full circle is that I'm his ideal avatar. I am like the, if, if I'm the ideal avatar for your business, like you're going to do well. Like this is going to work out really good. Yes. So <laughs> repel it. All of that to say, don't be afraid to repel some people online. Trust me, the more you put yourself out there, the more that you're going to get anyway, the haters will come. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Taylor it's okay. tells us the haters going to hate. Right. Sorry. Haters going to hate. Boy, <laughs> she got some of that lately. But <laughs> ooh, I'll tell you, yeah, it, it's good to repel the people that you don't want to work with. And yeah. it's, it's even better to attract the ones um, that you're going to have beautiful synergy and success with. Absolutely. And you can do that with your, your, your website, your uh, content marketing and your social media marketing all in, in one. And I mean, I know there are many more avenues than that, but that's kind of what we've touched on today. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to invite you to share some final thoughts, something that you think that our audience needs to know before we close out our conversation. And don't forget to invite them to connect with you where it's the wherever it's the best place to connect with you, really. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to your audience today. I hope that you guys have found this to be helpful. You know, the bottom line, really is um, people who say that they get all of their business through word of mouth or all of their business through referrals are probably saying so because they've never had the joy and experience the joy of having the internet work in their favor. And so I just challenge you today to go and take a look at your website. If you have one at all, um, take a hard look at it. See if it's fast friendly. Is your website answering people's questions? And if it's not, um, I would love to invite you to go over to amysingleton.net. At the bottom of my page there, you will find a form where you can enter your information along with your URL. And my team will go and do a few minute video for you. Just a quick audit showing you some areas of opportunity, things you can change today or someone on your team can change today to make your website work better in your favor and get you more of that no like and trust factor with Google, as well as the wonderful referrals and, um, and word of mouth clients that you get. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. In fact, I don't know why anybody wouldn't take you up on that opportunity. So I'm I'm all for it. You're going to see my name pop up because why not? Nice. It's really important to have this collaborative atmosphere among marketers and among business owners in general. So make sure that Absolutely. you're supporting yourselves just as much as you're supporting the people around you. With that, I invite you to comment, like, share, subscribe, because there are more conversations just like this coming up every single week. Um, with that, hope you have a great rest of the day and we'll catch you next time.